face, of course, additional challenges, especially in data and governance. We have been managing a sustainable product in emerging market securities for over 15 years. And we improve our approach as the companies and governments begin to respond to investors' desire for both more transparency in general and more sustainable practices. In all our Candrium funds, we eliminate across the board those companies and controversial weapons, severe breaches of labor rights, thermal coal or tobacco. Then we determine a sustainable universe among emerging market equities. We analyze each company for their adherence to the United Nations Global Compact for governance, for their ability to address Candrium's five major sustainable development challenges, and these are climate change, resources and waste, digitalization and innovation, healthy living and well-being, and finally, demographic shifts. The governance factor is extremely important in emerging markets. As with larger markets, governance is essential uh, for an effective environmental and social strategies. In emerging markets, there is a large proportion of state-owned or privatized, uh, but formerly state-owned uh, state enterprises and family-controlled companies. Improvement is underway and momentum is very strong. Volatility is usually high in emerging markets and so investors demand a higher risk premium. These economies are relatively more uncertain, but they also offer higher growth potential. The risk premium is normally related to the economic cycle, which we all know is improving. As vaccinations pick up and global economies reopen, we expect emerging markets to go back to their growth trajectory. Finally, this valuation gap is also partially explained by the difference in these two investment universes. Technology is the single most important sector for emerging markets, and we know that these stocks trade at high multiples. On the other hand, more cyclical sectors like energy and materials account for a high percentage of our investment universe. And so, uh, the blended multiple for emerging markets is structurally lower. Emerging markets are volatile and subject to psychological overreaction. So we look for good quality companies that we believe have good sustainable growth potential over the long term. This helps us ride out the boots of volatility one can see in emerging markets. We have a proprietary screening tool which we have developed ourselves and which helps us identify companies for intensive analysis. We complement our stock picking with an element of top-down themes or supportive trends, plus earnings revision trends. Some of the supportive trends are pretty much obvious, climate change, healthcare, resource depletion, but we don't uh, underestimate the variety of opportunities in emerging markets. Of course, the direct enablers of uh, green transitions are highly sought after by investors. The way we have designed uh, this investment process screens out non-sustainable companies first, then integrates sustainability themes as we analyze the business model of the companies in the eligible universe. So ESG integration is not an add-on, it's really an integral part of the analysis of each company's business model and growth potential. Of course, Candrium has 25 years of sustainable investing experience, so we have been able to grow along with the rest of our colleagues. We actively vote at AGMs of emerging markets companies, and we engage in one-to-one -one and collective dialogues just as we do with the largest global companies. COVID, of course, made this more difficult, especially in countries uh, which require in-person voting at AGMs, but we have kept at it.
The biggest advantage for investing in emerging markets is its potential for high growth. Uh, we're talking about countries that have grown a lot in the past few years, but have significantly more room to grow. In the near future, these countries are expected to benefit from the pickup in the global economy. Places that were more hard hit by the pandemic are reopening. It is the last wave of normalization, and we think it's not yet reflected in stock prices. Another key point for adding emerging markets is its diversification potential. We believe globalization has peaked for now, and as economies become less interconnected, the equity returns become less correlated. So adding emerging markets has diversification benefits. Um, we invest in over 30 countries, and uh, these countries represent only 15% of the global value. However, these economies account for more than half of the global GDP and even more in terms of population. So we believe that emerging markets are massively underrepresented in terms of market cap relative to their contribution to the global economy.